so one of the things I do when I solo is I try and go low to high and find that excitement. You know, you go high low and then you go low high and it keeps it exciting, keeps it, you know, mixed up. And I'm going to take a phrase and just by leading with my third finger, I'm going to create a run that goes. This is something I do all the time, and it's a really easy way just to get up the neck. And there's a couple of benefits, because every new position you get into, you can stay for a while. And I'll show you that in a second. But let us it's a repeating riff, so we just have to learn it once, and then we have to adapt it to each new position. I'm going to leave the little finger out. I mean, when we're playing in A minor blues, we want to use the little finger. But sometimes we want to give up the little finger because this thir third finger is so strong, we can just we can slide it around everywhere. So I'm going to take my third finger on the second string, and this is the eighth fret. It's a G note. That's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to pick that note, and I might even slide into it, but that can come later. I'm going to pick that note, and I'm going to pick the A note on the first string, fifth fret. So the first two notes are. And then I'm going to do the C note on the first string, which is the eighth fret. And that's the third note. And then I'm going to pull off. And all that is is I'm picking with my third finger as I, as I pull off from the string, pull down. It picks the note. It repicks that A note. So that's the phrase, starting again. Pull off, and if you've never pulled off before, this is a good place to do it because you're on the first string. When you pull off down here, you kind of land on other strings and that can get a little messy at first, but on the first string it's very easy because you just, you hit the note and you literally pull down and it restrikes the other note that you're holding down below, which is the A note. So here's the phrase. Oops. I'm going to do exactly the same thing in a new position. All I do is I slide my third finger up two notes, and now I'm in this position. Now it's shorter, the fret length is shorter, it's just a whole step rather than a, a step and a half, but I'm going to do the exact same phrase. Here's the first phrase. Slide up with your third finger to this A note. Do the same action, it's exactly the same, except your stretch is two frets rather than three frets. Slide up, and we're going to go up to another one. I'm going to slide up to the C note, which is on the 13th fret. I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but this is a bit staggered because of the way the guitar works. And this might be a funny one for you to remember at first. So, second string, 13th fret, first string, 10th fret, first string, 12th fret. Do your pull off back to this D note on the 10th fret. I'm going to review. Slide up. Slide up three frets to the C note. So. The hand position changes a little bit, but it's exactly the same phrase. So just take a while and do these really slowly and memorize them. And then we'll move on to the next position. And the way you can look at this is just choose your anchor notes. Your first anchor note is this G note. Your second anchor note is this A note. Your third anchor note is this C note. And now we're moving on to the fourth anchor note, which is a D note. And I think 12, 13, that's the 15th fret. It's a D note, it's the dot. So we've done these three. And we move up to the D note, and this is so we're, ta we're staying in the pentatonic A minor blues scale, and that's why I'm making these particular choices of notes. So this phrase, starting on the D note, 
then you move to the first string, 12th fret, that's the E note, and then you strike this high G note, and then you pull off. So it's exactly the same four note phrase in all these different positions. So now I'll review all four of them. We're almost done. Okay, I'm gonna go two more frets to this E note. We hit the G note, the A note. And this is a really kind of easy one, and visually it's really pretty good. So, starting again. First one, second, third, fourth, fifth, and now we come back to the beginning, which is home, which is just an octave above. So our last phrase is the same notes, just an octave above. And it's really just, I think it was five positions. And the idea with this is to make it as smooth as possible. And every time you change your hand position, to make it kind of sound like you haven't changed your hand position. And as you can see, I'm kind of dragging it up a little bit. That's an effect that I'm trying to get. I'm kind of sliding up each time, which is putting a little English on it, which is really a good thing. back home, and you can get it faster and faster. For me, that's the goal, is to try and do it that fast and that smooth. Now, the real benefit of this is, after you, after you discover and, and kind of get comfortable with this, every position you're in opens up new possibilities for other notes, and I'll show you why. We're in this position down here, the first position. That means we can go here. Okay, we slide up to the next position, we can go here. I don't expect you to know that now, but see, you move up to this position, your hand is in a new place, and you can kind of reinvent the blues in this new position. You just have to apply this principle to all six strings, and that'll come soon enough. So, to demonstrate more notes in each position, to this position, move up to this position, move up to this position, and finally back home. So that's what you have to look forward to just by, you know, starting out simple and, and getting your brain used to playing the blues, the pentatonic A minor blues in basically five different places. Mm -hmm.